artist from the planet. This one straight to a boy neck. You better pray set no connect. Left by a shield and a friend. I your P45 if you can it. <laughs> Fire red and dead. Me God. Hey, I love and unity we say you now. Original head that me now stop chat alongside Stevie P. How you mean? This is the way it's supposed to be. What you mean, a man? Sure. We used to eat out the same pot. Long time ago. So long ago. We used to share anything we got. Long time. But no woman. But nowadays it's not like that. That's what we get to know. Oh, but my <laughs> Your good friend attacked me on your back. And now so we lifestyle go ho. Oh, oh. We want some love and unity in your community. That will make the place better for everybody. Love and unity in your community. Yeah, man, a long time me I tell about love and unity in your TVP. Sure, that's the place supposed to be. Sure. We used to eat out the same pot. Long time ago. Long time ago. We used to share anything we got. Long time. Sure. <laughs> but nowadays it's not like that. That's what we get to know. I'm your host Elle and I'd like to take this time to welcome to Firewood Station, Stevie P. Thank you, thank you for you know, having me on Firewood Station, oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Please can you tell the Firewood family a little bit about you, how you became what um, you are in the music business right. today? Everyone knows me as Stevie P, mm. my real name is Steve Prince, aka yeah. Stevie P. Yeah. Um, I started in the game about 1982. Okay. Um, playing about at home, basically, with friends, you know, the ashtray, your mom's ashtray with music and <laughs> trying to. Lip pot lips. Yeah, that sort of stuff. And, you know, <laughs> that's how it all started. And um, in the early 80s, I, I went out one evening with a couple of friends to a shucker gig mm. in a place called Club Norwich yeah. in Top. Because um, I like roots music, I like roots music, I like music in general. Yeah. And unbeknown to me, Sugar Mike was there performing. Yeah. One of my idols. Yeah. You know, so I'm going to see this gentleman for the first time in the flesh. Yeah. And um, saw him perform, and it absolutely blew me away. Yeah. And it just. Oh, it, I can't express how you made me feel watching him, yeah. but I just wanted to do this. I really, this is what I wanted to do. Mm. So um, after his little performance, I was trying to see if I can get to speak to him, and and he's very accommodating, yeah. very down to earth. Told him how it affected me, and yeah, man, and yes, you man, you can come in and do this thing, and you know. It was, Beautiful, you know, and that yeah. really, to this day, I'll never ever forget that. Yeah, and that's yeah. how I really got into the music. Um, and I started to write, you know, write songs and try my thing. You know, it didn't always work out great, but you just practice makes perfect. Yeah. And also, I kept persevering, you know, writing and asked my family and friends, what do you think? And yeah, Steve, you can sing, and yeah, that's a great song, and it just started from there. Mm. And um, back in the day, so much now, they don't have um, centres where you can, you know, that deal with arts. No. You know, and back then, the days of the GLC, mm. there was a lot of things that dealt Services. with, yeah, that dealt with music and arts and all sorts of stuff. So mm. um, there was this place that I used to go to call. Pyramid Arts mm. and myself and a couple of friends we'd go there and just hang around and watch the people rehearse yeah. and to, you know, after a while we started to you know, get to know people mm. and the staff and one of the staff members there, a young gentleman by the name of uh, Steve Marshall yeah. we became real good friends and he's a musician as well, singer, guitarist. Um, we got really close and he was telling me about his little journey in music business in Pyramid 
and how long it's been working there at the time it was 25 and I decided I needed to form a button because I had so much things to express okay. and, you know and uh, a few of my mates decided yeah we'll, we'll help you Steve a couple of guys would come in and we'd, I would try them out, but you know, they wanted to help me, but they wasn't really You're up to scratch. Up to scratch, or <laughs> sometimes it was all about, yeah, I want to do this, I want to get the girls, and yeah, yeah. That, kind of, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. And I really wasn't on that level. Yeah. It was about the music mm. and, you know, giving. Yeah. Until I found the right people, you know, we formed a band. Um, my very first band was called Group Casanova. Okay. Casanova because at the time it was just guys, five guys. Yeah. But I thought, you know what, no, I need to change it up. Um, I've got two young ladies involved. But we still kept the name, Group Casanova. Yeah. And in 1983, Pyramid Arts, the place that we went to, mm -hmm. just started to learn the music and the business and they actually took us under, under the wing. Okay. And As a sponsorship type thing? Sort of, yeah. And produced this track with us. Okay. Rock, myself That's and right. the young, a young lady by the name of Elaine Wellington. Okay. We've done a duet together. Yeah. And, you know, we wrote this song. And they, they, they was impressed. And they said, yeah, we should record this song and see what happens. And we recorded in a studio called Decibels, okay. which is in Stoke Newington. Was no longer there, but uh, and a producer we had by the name of Barry Morgan, late Barry Morgan. Um, we recorded in Decibels in um, Stoke Newington, and we had it mixed in Mark Angelo's in EC1 London, a big well-known studio. Everyone loved to mix and yeah. record in Mark Angelo's. If you can record in there, it's, good, it's a good sign. Big team. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we recorded and you know, recorded the track, mixed it, Mark Angelo's. We had the privilege of meeting Matumbi mm. for the first time. We started to meet people and rub shoulders and, you know, but at the same time, I was trying to make sure I keep my head on yeah. level ground, you know, yeah. don't start to grow an ego. Yeah, yeah, which is very hard. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 you know, it's not so easy trying to stay level. No, when really. you got certain temptations around you and people always patting you on your back, and you know, you can lose your way. Mm. But I decided, no, I need to. Uh, like I said, and you know, we met people, Matumbi. Um, oh, I should say, I might out on my um, first single. Um, we had people like um, a young gentleman by the name of Ray Armstrong, okay. a very great guitarist back in the day, no longer with us. Um, I had some real great musicians that came on board and did little overdubs on my single mm. and it really helped yeah. the track. Yeah. And the track done quite well in the charts and the Black Echoes. Okay. You know, things like that. It, it just, from there, it kind of, things have kind of took off. Spirals. Yeah, it took off. And, mm. You know, we had a little name and there was other bands that formed. Um, there was another place down in Stock Newton called Triangle. Mm. That's another organisation where people will learn to play music and we used to go down there sometimes. Yeah, and you had people like Lloyd Brown that used to be down there back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Wayne Marshall. Yeah. You know, G-Spot Wayne Marshall, yeah. he, he was part of that. Okay. Um, most, there's so much talent in Hackney and it's, it's, it's unbelievable. unbelievable. It really <laughs> is. Yeah. Uh, there's so much talent. But um, I can go on forever, but that's, oh, where, I came, that's where I came from, <laughs> from back in the day. You know. When did you start singing? What age was that? I think I was 22. Okay. Yeah, 22 when I seriously started singing. Yeah, okay. 22. You were telling us about your first single then, but what was it called? Should Have Been You. Should yeah. Have Been You. Yeah, it was a duet with a um, young lady, um, Elaine Wellington. Yeah. But it was a group thing. 
group was called Group Casanova. Yeah. And the track's a rear track and vinyl, 12 inch. It's on YouTube. I found it the other day actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surprise. How do you feel watching them back now? Um, it was great memories, you know. I mean, listening to those old stuff, really great memories. I hear a lot of my music all the time now, and it's um, it's not that I'm big headed or anything. But when I hear it, it, it's it's like it's just normal, you yeah. know. Or you don't really want to listen to it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I know others like it's, that. Um, you know, I do get people calling me or emailing. Oh, Steve, that's a great track, and, and I, I don't know, I love, I love yeah. all that because it makes me feel I'm on the right track. Just keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm definitely not one of those people that. Yeah, I'm on Stevie P, I'm a producer. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm definitely not one of those. <laughs> yeah. You know, I let my work do the talking, and if they're happy, mm. that's my buzz. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You know, it's, of course we want to get paid, mm. but if I'm honest, it's more about the love than the financial gain, seriously, yeah. and that's the truth. Yeah. And that's from the heart. Then I can look any man or woman in the eye and say that. Yeah. Because I mean it. That's true. Yeah. Of course, we want to get paid. The reason why we want to get paid is so we can continue this. Because you know the powers that be and the things that we want to do, you need money to keep going. To keep going. That's the real world. Mm. You know, if it was not so, it, it wouldn't bother me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it really would not bother me. It makes sense. It's for the love. Yeah, but um, my biggest buzz, um, I I done a track um, a couple of years ago um, with a young lady by the name of Denise, Win uh, Denise, I was just about to say Williams, Peters, I mean, yeah. um, another UK artist, yeah. female, yeah, she's um, with um, another label, UK Pressure, Yeah. she came here and she done a track, and the track was a nice track, it was uh, had it your way, that's the name of the track, I'm just trying to remember the title. We, you know, we've done the track and a couple of weeks later she was on Facebook and she was playing the track and you know, telling her people on the Facebook a uh, great track and she, she was so happy and the buzz she had about the track and just to see that, it really was nice. Yeah, it made it worth your while. Yeah, it, it, really, it was such a buzz and I thought, just as, you know, she was so happy. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that is so nice. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. did that. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. meant so much, you know, yeah. to see how she was so happy. But I'll never forget that. So when I can do, when I see I'm doing these sort of things, mm. it really makes it worthwhile. Yeah. You know, even if it's just one person. <laughs> if I can touch one person with one piece, it, I'm doing the right thing as far as I'm concerned. You are. Yeah. But you're not just a singer though, are you? No, I'm a musician <laughs> as well. Um, I played with um, various bands. Um, a band that I was part of creating as well. A band called TRS, mm -hmm. which is Triangle Rhythm Squad. Because that was part of Triangle's Rhythm Squad. Okay. Then we took that, we changed it to Third Rhythm Squad. Yeah. Because we, it's not that we didn't want to be affiliated with it. It's just that we didn't want to be yeah. pigeonholed as their band. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we, the TRS, we kept the TRS, but it was the Rhythm Squad. Um, we've done a lot of sessions with people. Mm. Worked with um, Winston, the late um, Louisa Marks. Mm. <clears throat> she saw us uh, um, backing up somebody and she just approached us and said, oh, I love you guys and we do work with me. Well, of course we would. Louisa Marks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I had to ask her twice. <laughs> you know, and um, she done us the honour of actually performing a show at the Triangle. Mm. Yeah, you know, we asked her if we can maybe do it. Beautiful. Yeah, of course. You know, some of these artists are so humble. Yeah. You know, I it's wish there was all like that, unfortunately, not everyone's the same, but... Oh, a few. Yeah, you know, she, she was very humble and accommodating and, yeah, working with Louisa Marks, that blew my mind. I can imagine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, 
pleasure to work with Louisa. I've worked with um, other artists. Um, Winsome, uh, we was part of, um, you know, you heard of Sir George? No. There, there was a record label back in the day mm -hmm. and um, they actually were very big in the 80s. Okay. You know, in terms of Lovers Rock and that. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard of Sandra Reed? Yeah. Right. She was one of the first artists that m my band, Group Casanova, yeah. we was approached by um, Sir George Anthony Brightley. Okay. If we can support uh, her, but be it part, of, you know, use the name Pure Silk. Okay. So we was part of Pure Silk and we supported Sandra on a tour with a new various album she had out. Um, U boy and all that and those songs and mm. you know she was our very first main top main UK artist yes. we worked with. Yeah. Okay. Um I've worked with um Shanti have you heard of Abashanti? You must yeah. have heard of yeah. Abashanti, the roots yeah. you know sound system and um he's got a a band part of that which mm. is the Shantiats. Okay fronted by his brother, Blood Shanti. Yeah. He's the, he's the drummer and lead singer. Okay. So it's um, Blood Shanti and the Shantiites, and I've been with them quite a long time, for 10 years, traveling most of Europe. Singing and playing? Yeah, keyboards, playing keyboards and vocals. Mm. That was my part in the band. Um, which it was a, you know, working with the Shantiites was brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it's the first time I've actually been all over Europe. And when I was working with them, it was, you know, all over France, Belgium, all over Europe. It was beautiful. Yeah, okay, can imagine. And Abashanti, he's a well-known sound here, mm. but certain parts of Europe, he's like, worshipped. Really? He's like, worshipped. I mean, there's murals of him on the walls. Wow. Seriously. <laughs> You know, he blew me away. He's like massive in certain parts of Europe. Wow. Really is massive. <laughs> you know, and which is sad because I'm thinking in his home thing, it's not the same. It's always the way though, isn't it? Yeah, but it, it shouldn't blew, be. It blew me away because, well, you know, we went up all over France, Potier, uh, Toulouse, and Belgium, and he is massive and like I said, mules on the wall out of shanty and the crowds that would come to his gigs and <laughs> you know, I'm just, because I thought to myself, this man should be rich. Yeah. The amount of people that follows him. Yeah. You know, that blew me away and that was an experience working with the shanty eyes mm. and other shanty. Um, I've worked as a session musician for various people, I've had the pleasure of working with um, reggae artist Al Campbell. Mm. Well, back in him in yeah. um, Wales, I think it was. Um, Al Campbell meeting Sly and Robbie, Alternatis. Um, you know, rubbing shoulders with people that you, you can only. Not just, just people, come on. Man. Yeah, you know. <laughs> They're not just people. And you know, veterans, <laughs> exactly. veterans, yeah, you know, and you're, you're on the same bill as them, on the same stage, yeah. or the, you know, next door to their dressing room, and you know, <laughs> Sly and Robbie, yeah, alternate mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a great experience. Um, but, um, having said that, I mean, we do have a whole heap of great UK artists as well, I and mean, there's one particular artist that I really back in the day was hoping I'd. Can get to meet and get to work with, and you must have heard of it, the investigators. Yeah. Michael Gordon and the yeah. crew. Yeah. Yeah. Um, back in the day, I wanted to be in this band so bad. Really? <laughs> I wanted because I mean everything they touched was just yeah dynamite. Yeah. You know, in terms of lovers rock. Yeah. And um, one of their tracks, um, "Woman, I Need Your Loving," yeah. a good friend of mine. And, plays the guitar on that. Okay. Um, the guy that used to run fashion, uh, Chris Lane, his okay. brother, Alan, 
Okay. Play guitar. Ding, 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 ding. And when I found that, I said, oh, Helen, please, put in a word. I need to get into this band, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it, never, it never happens, but, you know, I, I was trying to think. Yeah. Um, fast forward now, years later, like now, um, 2018, I had the privilege of working with Mr. Gordon. Yeah. Michael Gordon. Uh, I mean, Michael and the guys back in the day, I said to Michael, you know how much babies there must be around it because of you guys. Yeah, truly. Yeah, because there was dynamite back in the day. To me, for me, there was one of the best male lovers rock bands. Yeah, they were. Back in the day, you know. And, you know, not taking nothing from male artists, but you had great, we well, still got great artists like Paul Dawkins. Yeah. The Heptics. Yeah. You know. They're still around. Arima. Yeah. Arima. Arima. Yeah. We still, all them guys are still doing their thing, you know, which is great. And I don't think they get enough props. Mm. Mm, they don't. Yeah, because they, they're putting so much and they're giving us so much. And I don't think, I don't know if it's the UK fans or what, but I don't think artists are treated the way they should be treated. That's my personal opinion. <laughs> yeah. You know. But to work with people like Michael, you know, I I hope that to, I'll, I'll take that very hard. Okay, yeah, I do um, because he's a veteran in his own right too. He's our UK veteran. Um, yes. you know, Paul Dawkins. You got the females like Janet Kay, Carol Thompson, Audrey Scott. These are all veterans. Um. You know, but <laughs> you know the only thing I'm disappointed about. I'm disappointed about is um, with the UK system, the lovers rock and that, and well, reggae in the whole. I don't think um, enough new talents being brought forward. Mm. No. But or brought forward by those that. Why do you think that is? I, I've got my own opinion, but I don't want to really go over there okay. you know I just want to which I think is sad because there's so much talent there is that we have here and I love the old the old stuff but there's a lot of young people that really want to come into this thing mm. and we was lucky back in the day because like I said we had organizations that had helped us with music and that you don't really get these Kind of things anymore. No. So now they need the people that they looked up to. Oh yeah, if I, I want to sing Love Us Rock. I want to. But where do they go? Yeah. People to deal with them. How? Yeah. How you was dealt with? Exactly. Mm. So and because the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I'm hearing people say, "Well, I don't listen to reggae, the UK reggae, because the quality not good." But check it. The reason why it's no good because no one's bringing. Helping the the ones that want to be. Yeah. So they're now going to the shops and getting their own software and doing it themselves. And because they haven't got the experience, of course the quality is going to be poor. Yeah. What do you expect? If we, so, you know, we need to help. The ones that's been there before don't seem to be, you know, I can go on, but I don't want to say the wrong thing. But okay. <clears throat> I'm just saying, there are, we, we have artists here that have a great platform that can actually help and it's not happening. Yeah, they need to ask, if they need to question themselves, yeah, look it's, within themselves. It's not happening and you know, and I've seen numerous artists, yeah, yeah this artist is appearing and, and it's the same old and not that I'm saying, there's nothing wrong with the old stuff, but why is it just the same old all the time, every time? Mm. You know, and then I'm hearing, well, well, if we don't, our music's gonna die. Well, it will die if we're not bringing forth new things. If it's just the same old, same old. You know, yeah. I love the things that are, um, what's it, the old two. Jackson Love Is Rock. I love that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I really do love that. Yeah. But what I would like to see, this is my personal opinion, I would like to see... Some up and coming. You know, I would like to, how I would like to see it, I would like to see the old stuff too, but I would like 25 of that, 25 and the new. Yeah. You know, mix it up. Yeah, I agree. So, <clears throat> next year, you know, it's, it starts to head more to... The news, the news. The new and, and the audience for today sort of thing. So, isn't that going to make it grow? Yeah. You know, we love the old stuff. Of course we do. But it can't keep going the same way. Yeah. Without bringing people in, because it will ultimately fade. Yeah. So, you know, that's the only thing. That's my little rant. <laughs> <coughs> my little rant. So, I mean, I love my music. I love what the artists are doing, but I just think we're not doing enough in terms of bringing the new. Supporting, yeah. You know, introduce them, this person or that person. And with myself, I've produced quite a few people that are not not, because mm. that's my intention. Yeah. There's talent, talent out there, and I want to get them heard and get them on board. Until they are known. Yeah, until they are known. You know, mm -hmm. and right now I've been working with these three lovely ladies, new being queens. You know, I've worked with numerous artists, but these ladies give me such a buzz. Really? They are so professional. Oh, it's nice. The passion, and they want to do everything right, but and they're so humble. You know, I haven't really come across too many artists like that at all. Yeah. You know, I really enjoy and look forward to working with them. Yeah. That's you nice. know, and they're new artists, so that I'm, I really feel good about that because they're new, not mm. big headed, not egotistic. You know, just trying to learn and grow and be the best they can be. And I love being around people like that. Yeah. You know, and they give me such a buzz. Inspiration. Yeah. They give, you know, and if we can get more artists like that, ooh. Mm. Why is music important to you? <clears throat> Music's important to me because the way it affects us. I mean, emotions. I, I look at music um, as a spiritual thing. It's, it is part of you. It's, 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 it's your emotions. It's how it affects you. I don't know, I can't explain it. It just... It just hits you a certain way, it just hits me a certain way and when I hear music or creative music, you, know, you can ask some of the artists I work with, I actually see colours and waves. waves and you know, waves. yeah, same thing with my harmonies, yeah. you know, I see, I can actually, actually see them in my head, okay, you know, yeah. It might sound strange. No, it doesn't. <clears throat> it doesn't sound strange. Um, a lot of my music I actually are created, conceived when I'm sleeping. Mm. So I've got this next to me. I can, I can show you. It's full. I'll keep it next to me. Because sometimes it's a whole track just boom in my head. Vocals, lead, everything. And I'll grab, let's get up quickly in there. Yeah. And I record it. Wow. it Go in the studio and I put the melody down and, and um I got a track that um it's not released yet, but it's called the Genie Rhythm. That's what I've named it. Um, it's not released yet, but I've given it to a couple of artists, I wanna say who. And one of the artists is a really great this and call me up where you get this reading from what this reading is bad <laughs> can't wait to work on it and mm. you know and it really touched me because I'm thinking oh. I don't know music going back to your question it's just how it affects me it's you know it can make if, if you're militant it can affect you if you're sad. It can affect you. It's uh, I don't know. It's just it's just my food. Yeah, yeah. It's my food. Yeah. You know, there's times and time, but you know, oh, I'm gonna pack this in. But it can't happen if I'm real. It can't. 
Yeah. 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 What I'm trying to say, really, if you look at it, really, I'm fed up with working with you people. Or that's what I'm saying, really. It's not yeah. the music. Yeah. Just like the world. The world is a beautiful place. Yeah. It's the people, isn't it? Yeah. And it's the same thing with music. So it's never, I want to give up music. I want to give up the elements that's around yeah. my music. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. That's, but we always say music. It's not, it's not the music. Yeah. It's the elements or the people around you that's holding down your vibes or, you know, mm. making your vibes feel negative or, or trying to make. That's what we try to give up pretty. Leads on to my next question nicely. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in the Most High? Of course, I do. The only thing, I don't want to upset no one. <laughs> oh, I, 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 um, I don't believe that you need to have a building to believe mm -hmm. or worship anything. Mm -hmm. It's in your essence. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, so what I'm saying is the church thing, you know, if that's your thing, you know, I respect it. But it's not necessary a thing as far as I'm concerned because if, if you believe it's between you and the Father, you, you know, you don't need a building. No. The, the building's there to tell people, to tell him and her, I go to church, I, I believe in God. That's what a building's for. Yeah. Do you understand? I do. It's to tell the masses. That that's what you do. Yeah, it's what I do. I yeah. don't need to do that. No. You know, you can go in the toilet and speak to the Father. Yeah. It's in your essence. It's, so yeah, I, I believe there's a almighty mm. power, definitely. Yeah. I mean, look at the planet. Look at me and you. Yeah. yeah. Of course I do. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but like I said, I'm just not really into the church thing, yeah. personally. But if that's your thing or their thing, I respect it. Yeah. You know. No, I agree. With that's you. all I'm saying. How does that affect your work? How does that affect my work? Yeah, it does. It affects my work every time because I got my little symbol up there. And I was. I'm doing my things, bless your father. Yeah. In my studio, and, you know. So yeah. it's yes, yeah, it affects my work. Of course it does because I'm here to do it. Yeah. Every time, well, you know, whenever I wake up, that's a blessing. That's the father. So if I'm able to sit down and do my music, of course he's part of that. <laughs> Not us. What? <laughs> What struggles have you faced as an artist in the music business? Um, struggles. Um, unfortunately, you, you know, you, the struggles. I don't know if you know if it's struggles. It can be a struggle if you let it be a struggle. Um, bad mindedness. <clears throat> you know, if you want it to be a struggle, then. But I don't let it bother me. Pinch of salt. You know, people smiling in your face and you know. <laughs> that the smile is not real. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, well done, Steve. And by that, they want you to fail. Like, you know, you get that in life. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's so, like I said, it, it's not a problem. It, it's only a problem if you make a problem. Yeah. You know, and I'm not here to please you. I'm here to contribute. Yeah. You know, I'm here to contribute and try and be a better person and make a difference within this music. Mm. You know, and make people happy. Touch people with my music. But I'm not really here to, you know, that's it. If you could give advice to an aspiring artist, what would it be? What would it be? Um, be real to yourself. 100% be real to yourself. Mm. Don't try and impress people mm. or lie to yourself. Don't be what you're not. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just, just that. I mean, if you really want to be an artist, you're gonna fall down enough time. Mm. People might even laugh at you, but be real. Now, don't try and. You know, yeah. impress them. If you fall down, you fall down. Yeah. 
pick yourself up and try and, you know, carry on. Just be real to yourself, that's important, it has to be. You know, the trying to impress people just leads you on the wrong road, and you, next thing you've got such a big head, and you've got people around you telling you, yeah, man, you're chilling bad. Because I'm a real person in terms of if one of my is performing badly, mm. I'm not going to curse them out. But there's a way of speaking to people. Oof, you know, it, it, it wasn't good. Yeah. But what I really can't stand in entertainment, not just music, entertainment fully, or just friends in general, is this, yeah, mine, thing was bad. Yeah. And you know in your heart that they needed help. Yeah. Why, you know, how are you helping that person? They're not. They're so not. now, oh, what's it? <laughs> yeah. Now, the next thing they're going to do, they're not going to try and learn up. anymore. Look, my boys and my, you know, the girls have said it. Yeah, I'm good. Mm. And they're going to they're gonna stay stagnant yeah. because they believe the crew that's supposed to be looking after them. Yeah. You're not teaching them nothing. If, they, if they're no good and need to go to the drawing board, you don't curse them out. Why oh, you rubbish? You know, but pull them. You no, know, you got the heart. Uh, but you're not ready. Yeah. You go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all this. Yeah, man. Thing nice. Oh, yeah, man. Thing. And you know it's not. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. For artists, to be real to yourself. If you know in your heart you could do better, but your brethrens are saying, yeah, man. Thing bad. Do you put, put, yeah, <laughs> you know better, so do better. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, be real to yourself. Yeah, that's definitely important. Well, in, you know, walk the walk of life. Be real to yourself. <laughs> it's for, true. For, you know, whether whether it's music, you know, shopping, or anything, working. Just be real to yourself. Yeah. What artists do you listen to? I listen to a whole heap of things. I listen to this particular artists. I don't know about a particular artist. Or genres. <clears throat> genres I listen to. I do love Neil Soul. Yeah. The reason why I love Neil Soul is it might sound strange as well. I get a lot of my vibes making my reggae tracks from the Neil Soul. Okay. How I hear things. Okay. So, I shouldn't have said that actually. Because the reason why I should have because I'm, I'm letting out some of my secrets. Yeah, that is part of my element. Mm. So, listening to other things and trying to create my sound, my the Stevie P vibe. Yeah. You know, because I, I mm. definitely try to be a lead in what I do with my music. Mm. A lot of my music's original. I do covers now and again, you know, because I do that to show versatility and to sometimes some of the artists, oh Steve, I would love to do this or can I do that, you know, so I'll, I'll come at it. Yeah. But most of my tracks, if you do, if you see my catalogue, is pure original. And the reason is <clears throat> because, like I said, I'm going to contribute, but I also want to leave a legacy. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm gone. Well, that's a Stevie P thing, yeah. you know, and I just want to contribute, but I, I do believe in being original, being, yeah, just being one of a kind, and I, I am definitely not a follower, yeah, in any, in any form, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I'm, I've always been elite, but that can come off a certain way with some people, some people don't like that and tend to look at you and think, say to you, or oh, give that impression, well, boy, he think he's too nice or he think he's too still shirt. It's not that. Mm. I know myself. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is, I know me. Yeah. And anything I do is between me and the father. I know I'm gonna slip sometimes, I know I'm gonna make mistakes. But the most important thing to me is the most, like, hey, that's it. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's what who matters. Definitely. <laughs> you know, of course I want to be cool with people, but 
come real, you come second. Yeah. <laughs> that's it, that's yeah. the truth. If second. You know? <laughs> if that's too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm not really, I'm not really on this um, trying to impress people thing. No. Full stop. Mm. Yeah, you know, my wife can tell you that, that's not me. You take me as I am, you can be like me, no you don't. It really doesn't bother me, <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. No, I'm just, no. There was a time, you know, growing up, of course you, it bothered you. You, you, you want to impress your friends, but you, yeah, one grows up. Yeah. Different times, but we grow up eventually, mm. you know, and you see things and some get the call in and talk and, you know, you know, I talk. Yeah. yeah. So I know, I know, I know what I'm supposed to do. Simple. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Can you share with the family, <coughs> family what plans you currently have got in, the, in your pipeline? Um, plans I've got in the pipeline. Um, I was the young ladies I mentioned to you about um, the new being queens. queens. They got a release coming out um, September, early September. Um, I'm really enjoying working with these young ladies because they, they just give me a buzz. Mm. Uh, very professional. They just, I just wish them so much greatness because the way they're behaving, beautiful. Uh, I just wish them the best. Uh, ever to them. Um, yeah, I'm working with these young ladies, uh, New Being Greetings, which is a pleasure. Um, I've got some more projects to do with a young man by the name of Robert Emanuel. Okay. He was one of the very first artists I worked with when I started Stevie P from 2012. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's doing his own thing as well, he's working myself, big up Robert. Um, I love working with JJ Born to Sing, yeah. so now and again, we, you know, we do mm -hmm. bits and pieces and he is a phenomenal artist he is. all around. He is unbelievable yeah. and for me you know i've said it you know he's one of the best we have right now i agree jj born to sing he is something else he is yeah you know, and i just take my hat off to him i think he's tremendous he is i do yeah. i really do and the uh, five red listeners get in contact with you um you can get in contact with me on facebook and um, Stevie P Music on Facebook, um, Twitter, mm. Steve, and Stevie P Music. Uh, I've also got a website where you can purchase my productions. Okay, the website is? SteviePMusic.net. www.SteviePMusic.net. So you can get you know, a whole heap of my productions from back in the day to current. Okay. Um, yeah, it's. Um, you know, the, the website needs to be updated because Stevie P is basically myself. Yeah. I have had people working in the past, but, you know, it's, um, everyone's got their lives, so, you know, commitments. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very hard, so. If you could, would you like to just be doing production just full time? Yeah, because I enjoy it, mm. you know. I, you know, I, I take it seriously. I, I study. I, um, I went to college to learn about doing music videos. Um, same thing with engineering. I did that from. I started. That, that started in '82 mm. with Pyramid Arts, learning how to mix and record. That started then, and then when everything changed from analog to MIDI, it was like I had to go back to school again. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, that, that kind of scared me a bit. I'm like, what? I've been learning analog on oh, MIDI. What's this MIDI and interface? And, uh, and, uh, so <laughs> I had to start learning again. But um, all the time that came back and, you know, yeah. and to this day, I still study. I'm always learning. I'm always studying, yeah. learning about frequencies and because that's what music is. You never too old to learn. And, you know, because, um, yeah, that, and um, I'm not a person that's comfortable with just being in one spot. Stay I like in. to, because there's always something new to learn. There is. Yeah, you know, so I'm always investigating. 
or if I hear a, a sound and think, what made that? And how is it made? And yeah. how can I make my bass lines sound a certain way? And so I like, I like to study about frequencies. And, and it seems to be working because people's always, Steve, your bass lines on your tunes are something else. And so I'm like, ooh, maybe it's working. Yeah. Pay off, pay off. <laughs> yeah. Please feel free to make a shout out to your well wishes. Uh, yeah, uh, well wishes and also artists. Some of the artists are, I have to big up. Um, I have to big up Mr. Michael Gordon. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity working with me. Um, I have to big up JJ Born to sing that. He's such a, ooh, <laughs> he's tremendous. He, he is. really is. Uh, JJ Born to sing. Um, also, some of the females as well. Rafelia, have you heard of Rafelia? No. no? Oh, great vocalist, brilliant. Um, there's so much talent. Um, you have to get me in contact with her. Yeah, Rafelia, um, the Nubian Queens. Yeah, definitely yeah. they Yeah, yeah, they're, they are phenomenal. Um, also, um, have you heard of um, the singer man, Andrew Slope? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, singer man. That off to him as well because the singer man's consistent. <laughs> he is consistent. He is <clears throat> he's always doing his thing. He Big up singer man. Um, and to the Stevie P fans and supporters, and a lot of them are from the states. Quite enough. Most of my supporters are from the states. Okay. Um, people that do buy my material tend to be from the States. Okay. Yeah, you know, which is great. Yeah. Great, but I was hoping it'd be more from home. Yeah, yeah. You know. From uh, and away rather than yeah, just away. Exactly, but you know, truth be told, most of my audience are from the States, even Africa. Okay. You know, because my products worldwide mm. and I do check and obviously you know what's what um, but they're from the states um, Africa, Japan mm. and parts of Europe but mainly the states mm. I'm getting most of my fat base from Don't complain No I'm not complaining <laughs> I'm not complaining I'm not complaining it's good it's good it's just um, you know I open up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Londoner. I'm a hackney man. <laughs> and most of my people are from the States, okay? I'd like to say Fire Red Station. I'd like to say Fire my fire, 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 f